All right, today's April 9th, 2024. This is the AI Agents Engineering Sync. Um, I'll just jump through the agenda, and then I think probably we have more discussion towards the end. Um, first item is from Mark. Uh, he's he's not here today, but uh, he said, I have a sync with, with Den uh, Denny's about the embeddable chat. Main takeaways, easiest approach would be to use an iframe solution. They created an issue to continue the discussion. So uh, if, if anyone has any uh, opinions on that, you can jump on that issue there. Any discussion on that one? Not really. I need to check better that issue, but I think it makes sense. Okay. Uh, technically, the content part is... Yeah, I think, it should, I think it's something that we spoke a little bit as well, uh, Darby, of having some kind of JavaScript that uh, users could uh, embed. Mm -hmm. that would render this for them just like a one line that allows them to embed this so i think it goes in those lines right i think so yeah yeah i i might check i might follow up with mark a little bit more like another day this week and just um sync up on that but it looks it looks like the right direction to me so i think the most obvious use case and maybe something we could start with is like uh uh embedding out get web pages so like handbook or something like that yeah yeah um, I do think so. There was there's one thing I noticed. Um, I forgot to mention this. Uh, agents, let me think how this works. Basically, for private projects, agents doesn't work. It's not even available. Um, is that so? So the the scenario is you have a private project. You go to the agents page. It says cannot be found. So it returns a four hundred four, which I think makes sense in the context of embedding the agent somewhere else. Is that an intentional mm. design or is that an intentional side effect of what that's, we I would say that's unintentional. I don't know why it wouldn't work. Okay. It needs, so I know why it doesn't work. It's because the permission. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why the permission is given false on that case. Yeah. Okay. I'll follow up on that. But, um, that will eventually beg the question of do you have authorization for users to access an agent and to create an agent, like to, to modify the agent. So reading the agent, uh, like you can make it public even on a private project, mm -hmm. private project, if you will, for example. So okay. that kind of permission, that, that that is a problem we will face eventually. Um, but I don't know why it's not working right. Okay. I'll... Um... I'll document it and create an issue to track it. Sure. Okay. Um, next item is for me. I uh, just linked a couple of the a uh, MRs that I've been working on. The require prompt one just merged, and then destroy agents should should be close to merging. Um, we just had some test failures that I was cleaning up. So, yeah, all in good shape there. Two good MRs. Or send them to me. I'm gonna use them to become a uh, front end maintainer. <laughs> nice. It's good because I review both of them and I already sent them maintainers. It skips one review. So yeah. that's that's good. Very efficient. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We'll keep doing that. Um all right, next one's from you, Eduardo. Um I was helping today Dennis um add support to streaming on the agents chat. And the reason why agents chat, chat was not working and it took almost a day to figure it out was the MR that I opened last week. Uh, the fact that it didn't match exactly, like I was not using the the React prompt for agent uh, meant that the post-processing was not happening correctly on the GitLab side. So we were expecting some answers in some format and it was not being triggered on that format. Uh, so it wouldn't, like everything was great, just that the response that include like a word final answer, for example, and it depended on it. So with the other MR, it does include now, uh, we will have streaming support and I hope that this, is a, this MR gets revealed uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, because I've just like, well, yeah, it's taking a little bit longer than expected to reveal, but I had to pick some merge conflicts in the way today. So that's good. So we're going to have both streaming support. It works really well. And we're going to have uh, 
yeah it working properly with the uh, with the with entropic it works actually better than it was before nice yeah cool all right well in addition to the um to the prompt matching or, or like the the prompt formatting change what is the uh what is the other like it looks like a client side change that was necessary for streaming for prompt matching it was on the back end I uh, was uh, was just preparing the message in the right format, basically. So following on Tropics API. So take the oh, best yeah. message. Yeah. yeah. So it's just a, a matter of like following the 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 the, the spec that I didn't before. So it's working. I tested. I managed like my my LLM work again. So it's 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 well. So once those two MRs merge, you feel like that'll take care of the issue? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. OK, um, next one. Uh, so I wanted to follow up on the documents upload. Um, can can we just talk about the blocker there? I just want to understand it. And um, I, I hadn't seen the video from the from the other week, so I thought we could just oh, yeah. make a note to upload that. Um, yeah, the, so like, you know, we're, we're not like blocked per se. It's like, like we could go build that stuff ourselves. It's just already being built in parallel. Um, what it comes down to is like, when you upload a document, there's post-processing that has to occur. Like for one thing, uh, you know, uh, assume it's like a PDF or something where you have to do full text extraction on the PDF. Um, and then you have to like chunk the document into parts that will fit in the context window neatly or or even better just like um like uh semantically relevant portions of the document right like you don't really want to split um a section into two separate sections where there's like context that's shared between them right and like typically the technique is to just create overlapping sections right um, so it really all comes down to like how you index those those documents is, is what makes them like searchable um, to the agent. Uh, and, and so like that post processing needs to occur and then the results need to be stored somewhere. Um, we, we could take a stab at, at like leveraging some of the Postgres infrastructure that's been built for the, the docs use case. Um, but it seemed like they had good direction with like uh, their prototypes on top of Elasticsearch and stuff. So it just didn't seem worth it to um pick, pick a direction on that just yet we were just waiting for things to settle out a little bit okay is there um is there work we can do now to prepare for that like assuming we would need some sort of like interface for up, uh, uploading documents um like are they building an architecture for where those files would go um like is that using like upload file api or something like that like could could we start to like build out some of that just because the front end of ours is going to take a while to to get ready to so we could uh start start building that if that's like kind of the, the first feature that we want to release yeah I, I imagine that we would just use the the same document upload mechanism that's present on like you know issues and basically everywhere i don't think we need anything special we just need the linked documents to um we just need the documents to be linked to the agent config in some way. So maybe we could go ahead and think about the database changes that would be necessary to, to do that. Um, but in terms of like storage and all that, I think we're we're good. Um, and and I assume like we're going to need to like probably periodically or at, le at least plan to be able to re-index those, right? Like if we change the technique for how they're, they're indexed or if we change the text embedding model that we use or something like that. Um, so, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. So that, that sounds like, um, that sounds like a chunk of work. I can, I can take a stab at that. Basically like in the database, we have an agent version that's gonna have one or more documents associated with it. So we need to make that association. We probably need to include those documents in the GraphQL response, have the ability to upload them, like do all of that, like get that all in place so that when 
the system is ready to to parse those documents and do all the the magic there, then then we can just like make that connection, and we could just yeah, feature yeah. that as kind of. I don't even know if we need to feature flag it off since this whole thing is off, but um, it could be separate so that uh, we don't expose document uploads until there's actually something that we can do with them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll sketch out some notes on that and and um, make sure that aligns with with what you guys are thinking. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm just mentioned that uh, Albert um, Alper, sorry, will be working on adding file upload UI to the model registry. So that could be somehow the same work, at least part of it. So the uploading seems trivially the same. Uh, so it might be uh, on those lines. Okay. And uh, like, a, like I mentioned it here, one of the early versions or the first iteration could be just append everything, right? It will work for small documents, not for large ones, but just append everything, create a little system prompt with mm -hmm. this whole document attached to it and the prompt can end like the, the LM takes that uh, into, into into context. It could work. That you is, mean you mean like once you do the text extraction, just shove it into the prompt? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe do some token tokeniz tokenization to reduce a little bit the size of the thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't see why not do that uh, to have at least a UI working uh, and some already, and then we can improve this uh, down the road. Okay. So that, that sounds like maybe two issues then. One for file upload, all that, and then yeah. one for like an MVC of just like, just dump the whole document in there. It'll work yeah. for some, some set of, of use cases. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know how far along they are with the uh, docs embeddings, but if we, if we, if we were urgently trying to get something out, like it might be better to go down that path um, rather than shoving it into the into the prompt, just because like that's kind of kind of messy and probably violates the expectations of of what people would assume that feature does, right? Like if I already have a nice prompt, yeah, it's very it's maybe versioned or whatever, but just replacing all that text with the content the content of the document doesn't really make a ton of sense. Uh, and there's no really anyway. way to measure like how large of a document would would fit in the window, you know. Yeah, I agree. It's not. It's it's a not a due solution and not scalable and not sustainable and a solution that will be changed mm -hmm. for sure. Like I I wouldn't want to sell a product with this kind of stuff, but it allows us to. Figure out the UI, uh, at least of file upload of experience, and have it working somehow. I do understand. I do think that we should keep the expectations or the documentation of what it does and how it does. Uh, okay, tell the users that this is what because we are already altering either way the prompt of the user, right? So they give a system prompt, but we append the the React kind of uh, prompt flow either way. Uh, so that we play as well. So the prompt is being changed. That, that that is a given. And now the matter is we can tell them exactly how it is changing. Okay, this is the prompt you give, and this is the prompt we are sending to the Lala eventually. It's a little bit hard to, to compute that, but it's possible. It could be something or a, a way we we could go about it. But yeah, it's it's a hack. This is a hack. This is we call it in Portuguese a like, gambiarra. Um, but it helps out uh, at least in the beginning. I think it's worth exploring at least. Like if we if we don't want to release it at all, we don't have to. But it could be be a starting point. Um, who is who is the best person to talk to on the status of the of the document parsing stuff? Um, what's his name? Uh, uh, me. Yeah. Uh, pop, 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 pop. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we can throw it in the document later. Uh, yeah, just, I'll, like, I'll, I'll sync up. I'll sync up with that person just to kind of see what they're thinking on timing. 
because if it's if it is just like a couple of weeks out then you know that will timing timing will probably line up fine but if it's a couple of months it's, it's whoever's working on x-ray i think or or uh, possibly the um is it madison from global search is that her name madison or, or the guy working on x-ray Mikolaj, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. So, uh, yeah, I think number six is yours, Eduardo. Yeah, I was talking with Darby now. I created. I've been talking a lot with the AI folks um, across different teams. And I, I, I like one of the problems is that there's no single vision for the technical implement, like what should be the architecture of the AI. So I'm building a blueprint on that for that right now. But, and I wanted to add AI agents as like the solution for prompt management, the solution for tool management and so on and so forth. So I created a blueprint that included AI agents as it, as part of it. My goal with including AI agents is that we didn't wouldn't go to spread out, uh, but we would eventually reconcile together, uh, so that we can dog food our own solutions and not go into the feature flag route, where we have feature that we offer and a feature that we use like feature flags for customers and internal feature flags, which is always confusing. Uh, but I spoke with the pro. I, I I shared it with the product manager already. I discussed with them with Kevin, Pini, Susie, Taylor, and uh, it's too early to put uh, AI agents as in too risky to put uh, infrastructure our own infrastructure on top of AI agents. Uh, and I agree with them. Uh, so in the short term, I don't think anyone is going to be. Uh, be too excited internally about AI agents and we shouldn't push as a solution for, we shouldn't block internal movement based on AI agents. We should guide internal solutions to use generic, more like well-defined components for AI, but in a way that we can eventually replace maybe by AI agents, but we shouldn't propose right now AI agents as the solution, for example, for prompt management within the company itself. All uh, right. I think this is uh, the outcome of the discussion that I have. Um, yeah. That's what I had over there. But if you want to give feedback on the document as well, I appreciate. So the goal is to be a high level overview. And then I have blueprints for each of those components, like how, like it's more about the what needs to be built rather than the how. And then each of the components go into the how. Define uh, there's like defining responsibilities and then uh, dig in deeper into each of them later. Cool, makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I, I followed it up a bit on because I wanted to make sure I understood the the what's it called the unit um, that unit thing the mm -hmm. like. I, I think like last time we talked, I assumed that people were like trying to like block access to certain features or or put them into different like um, tiers or subscriptions. But my understanding now is actually that like the use case that motivated all that was more about like tracking feature utilization on on self managed um, for for AI features. Uh, which is which is I think good. Like I, I, the only reason I brought that up is because I saw some comments in here related to like um, authentication for like various prompts or tools or or models or or, or features. Um, and I I don't think that that is. I mean, you need the authentication layer for like the Duo stuff in general. Um, but I I don't think that they're planning to use that unit framework thing for. Um, authorizing access to like fine-grained features or, or anything of that nature, which never made sense to me because you're basically guarding prompts behind like a paywall or something, which I didn't understand. 
Um, I think I, I, th I thought it was a targeted for for subscription based. Like you, it's a way to build the subscriptions. It could be that both of the use cases are under that under unit primitives, but I yeah, had right. a strong impression. Yeah, I had a strong impression that it it, it relates to subscriptions. Yes, so I don't know. Okay, we'll continue to figure it out. I don't think it matters for the moment. <clears throat> Okay, um, we're over time. Any anything else before you? Mm -hmm. No, on my side. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.